Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Aaron Rogers, one of the ear, nose, and throat docs helping to oversee the hearing center down here. And this is... My name is Stacy Pickleman. I'm the lead audiologist for Advanced Hearing Centers. And we're here just to talk about the different styles of devices. I have patients all day long ask me, you know, how hidden can a hearing aid be? How discreet is it? You know, I don't want someone to see it or be concerned about it. Even though if you walk down the street, you see people wearing giant earbuds and uh, bright red flashing neon green earbuds, and they're not worried about being discreet, but I totally understand. And we have a lot of options that uh, vary in how much technology they can pack in that small device, uh, and then versus how kind of discreet, tiny, and hidden they can be as well. Yes, yeah, so one of our most popular um, discreet in the ear only devices are nice and small and also rechargeable. So these devices are very, again, depending on the size and shape of your ear canal, the least visible. However, these do not have Bluetooth because of how small and uh, compact they are. So basically, the smaller they are, there physically is not enough room in that little device for a Bluetooth uh, you know, chip and, a, and an amplifier or an antenna for the Bluetooth service. I just saw you put that back in the device there, and it seemed to have clipped onto a little metal um, maybe magnetic holster that's is that how it recharges so you're not plugging a wire into this thing is correct that right? so it's magnetic it's very easy to use even patients with arthritis or numbness of their dexterity it's very very user friendly so these are pretty good and handy for folks even with some arthritis dexterity issue with their fingers easy to charge easy to stay charged and easy to wear uh, for instance i bet you didn't even notice that i had one in my ear this whole time that actually uh, was quite comfortable and quite easy to put on. Uh, so this is an option for a lot of people. You think about maybe, I don't know, 30 or 40% of folks go with a device about this size. Is that about right? It really just kind of depends on what the patients are looking for. Some of my patients are very active with their phone. They need something that's Bluetooth. So even if I would say it's more of the Bluetooth factor so if for the majority of patients. So when we want to start adding more and more tech to it, we do have these, which are a little less discreet, right? Correct. But they will be more visible, but they are rechargeable still, so the dexterity part of it is still as easy. However, it will be more visible. So this is a little more visible, and these come in different colors, uh, matched to skin or hair color, I guess, whatever's mm -hmm. more, um, more camouflaging there but these have more tech that can be built in. Just their size is less constrained. And are these, this looks like a custom mold. Are most of these custom mold or are these like off the shelf, ready to go molds? So these are the only ones that are stock off the shelf. The tiniest ones. Correct. It also has, we also have one that can be shaped for the size and shape of your ear canal. Um, so it's more custom but the larger in the ear that's more visible, those have to be a custom only So the custom, event. and the custom mold process, that takes a, kind of an extra visit to measure, fit, calibrate the ear. Correct, and we then, just take an ear impression, send it off to the manufacturer, and in about two weeks, we'll have your brand new device yeah, for you. Yeah, there's, there's actually a, like a uh, engineer there on a CAD screen, on a computer screen, figuring out how to fit all of those little digital chips into your customized ear canal model device. Uh, but these have uh, super high power, long battery life, and Bluetooth functionality to connect with your phone to give you all the phone access stuff to hear both calls as well as music, media, media podcasts, whatever. Podcasts, whatever you listen to from your phone or iPad, you can hear it through your hearing devices. And then probably overall the best selling, most popular style of hearing aid is next, which would be... So a lot of my patients, if they still want discreet but Bluetooth, a lot of patients choose a behind the ear. So behind the ear, it's kind of deceiving because it is, it's a device, it's a bigger device. It's got this uh, sort of longer uh, technology piece here where all the computer smarts lives and the battery lives in this thing. But that fits right behind the ear in that crease mm -hmm. behind the outer ear there. And it actually is just about invisible when looking at someone from the front or the side, completely invisible if you have hair like Dr. Pickleman because uh, you'll never see them through that hair, um, but they are slightly more visible than our microscopic in the ear canal. The advantage that I see, I think, is that these fit a little bit more comfortable if you're someone who's very sensitive to things sticking into the ear. They don't fit quite as tight in the ear, uh, and they have all the technology you can imagine packed into this 
computer processor in the back. Correct. And I actually had one of my patients tell me, well, this behind the ear part doesn't really bother me. People thought it was just the rest of my glasses from the arm of their glasses. So it really doesn't add any visibility to it. Right. Unless you really kind of pull down your outer ear and show people. My job is to make it as discreet and visible and the best sound quality we can give you. I'm kind of embarrassed sometimes because I'm examining patients and talking to them about their uh, medical issues upstairs. And then I go to look in their ear and boom, I hit a hearing aid. That's one of these hearing aids that I didn't even realize was in there until I'm trying to fish around in their ear and see it because uh, it just was so camouflaged. I was looking right past it, not even thinking yeah. about them wearing a hearing device. Um, and I was, you know, focusing on their other issues, of course, but I'm always amazed at that. And then I noticed that these all have kind of dedicated containers now. Is this mm -hmm. just a container that holds it? So that's a charger. Um, some of the manufacturers have portable chargers, which is what these are. They're small, they can fit in your pocket or your purse, um, and they actually charge on the go. So each one of these portable chargers, they actually hold a charge for about three days. There's other chargers out there that you don't really have to move around. You just keep it plugged in on your night stand and charge them once a day when you go to sleep. Right, and that's something that's changed probably the last 10 years since you've mm -hmm. been here, is that uh, we used to actually get piles and piles of batteries delivered to our office and send those out to patients every day. Someone was in charge of sending out batteries, but we have almost, mm -hmm. are there any models that are shipping new with batteries now, or they're so, all re almost all rechargeable? Most manufacturers are going the rechargeable route. Um, there are still a few models that you can get both rechargeable or with batteries. So we are able to off offer either way. Yeah, I mean, I found, I guess one advantage maybe to the batteries is that the batteries, you can keep a single set of batteries for a week or so, whereas the rechargeable, most people are charging them every night or... Every night. Yeah. Um, some, there's like not a pro phone. or con to batteries versus rechargeability. Yeah. Um, I just like the mere fact that it's one less thing to worry about. If you put it on the charger, the device will last all day. And I noticed this one here, this is the Cygnia Stiletto mm -hmm. device, right? which there's several brands and systems we, we have here, but this one also has that little automatic magnetic base charging system that sort of snaps in, gives mm -hmm. us a green light to let us know that we're good to go on that side. Uh, very handy devices and a nice portable carrying container. So that's kind of what hearing aid styles look like now. Uh, in modern times, there's none of this bulky, huge stuff behind the ear. And for the most part, folks with our average patient with moderate to severe sensory hearing loss is not needing a big bulky apparatus that you can see on their ear. They're very discreet kind of nowadays. Correct. No more ear horns. No more ear horns. All right. Thank you. Uh, and we'll see you again on our next video.